<sighs> June 19th. Uh, this is the vlog for June 19th. And uh, in a couple of days, um, new Gundam Breaker is going to come out. And uh, as some background, when I was playing a lot of Gundam Breaker 3, uh, I watched a bunch of videos from a guy called GL Eclipse. Uh, his real name's Dan. Uh, I think he's a uh, British fella. And he provided a lot of, a wealth of information on what different uh, mobile suits did, what sorts of abilities they had, where they were strong, where they were weak. Um, he would build the original design. He wouldn't like mix and match different pieces for these videos because you were gonna do that anyway. As a player, you were gonna take the parts that you wanted to use the most. And um, I don't know why it is exactly that eight o'clock at night is compressor time. But yeah, God, that's heavy. Anyway, um, Dan was extraordinarily helpful and he was well-respected throughout the uh, Gun and Breaker 3 community for being a source of knowledge and being helpful. He answered some questions of mine personally, uh, just generally a good guy. He released a video uh, today or yesterday saying that he absolutely did not like New Gun and Breaker through its beta, felt it was a poorly made game and would not be picking it up. So, um, that is some damning testimony. Uh, he played it on the PS4. Uh, reports are that it runs more smoothly on the PS4 Pro, but his chief concerns were twofold. First of all, the game just runs choppy. On the PS4, it apparently has a much lower general frame rate, and a lot of activity on the screen will cause the game's performance to plummet. Um, but even more than that, I plan on getting it on the PC, and I have a very strong PC, I don't know how well optimized it would be for the PC. Um, oftentimes, games like these are not very well optimized, so we'll see. I still do intend on getting it. The real problem, he said, is that the game was just very slow and kind of boring. Um, and just watching some of the unedited footage, I can see what he means. Uh, Gundam Breaker 3 had a very um, Musou feel. When I, when I say that, I mean it reminds me of the Musou games, which are generally called the Dynasty Warrior games here in the United States. Um, but, or, you know, now just Warrior games, since there's a Zelda one, there's a Fist of the North Star one, there's Samurai Warriors, which is the Japanese story, uh, as opposed to Dynasty Warriors, which is a Chinese story. Um, but that was how Gundam Breaker 3 felt. You know, you were fighting waves of enemy mobile suits, breaking them to bits and collecting a portion of their parts to use to make your own mobile suits. Um, in any given area, you were going to fight between uh, at least a dozen and usually upwards of 30 to 50 enemy mobile suits before moving on to another area. And there were usually uh, about... Um, two or three areas per map, sometimes as many as four. Uh, and so you got a feel of just, you know, wading through enemies, ha ha. It had sort of, imagine the same sort of numbers that you would get in a Diablo game. So not like fighting 30 enemies at once, like you tend to do in an actual Muso game, but fighting maybe between four to uh, a dozen at a time. Um, depending on the saturation of the map. From what I can tell in this new game, it's a weird combination of competing with an enemy team and also fighting sort of randomly generated enemies. So if you go into an area with you and your two teammates, I don't know if it's two or three at this point, three, three total players seems to match the style of like, uh, uh, Gundam Build Fighters Try, or uh, somewhat of the new Gundam Build Divers, although those tend to have even more like forces of five. Um, but let's just say that it's three on three. So you have six mobile suits who are in two groups of three competing against one another. 
while those two groups of three are competing, random sort of enemy mobile suits are spawning, and the goal is to kill more than the other team to get points or, you know, complete an objective that is being complicated by the environment before the other team can. I can see how that might start to task uh, even the most powerful PS4 um, if they're trying to keep track of you know, upwards of two dozen mobile suits at once, depending on how complicated these things get, and keeping in mind they have increased the amount of customization options for those mobile suits, so you can paint them in more colors. The old mobile suits had a maximum of two stickers that you could apply. These new ones have 30 stickers per piece, per piece. Uh, I should have said two stickers per piece versus 30 stickers per piece. And you can change the position of those stickers which means you can theoretically make some amazing art on the surface of your mobile suit. That's hard to process. It's hard to make one robot with that level of detail move and animate and do things with the level of post-processing that we've come to expect from console gaming. When you amplify that by at least six, uh, and then possibly even more, a couple dozens. That's serious. That's going to take serious processing power. If they're using the same engine from Gundam Breaker 3, uh, I can see how it wouldn't hack it. But here's one thing I want to sort of make mention of. I can absolutely understand Dan's desire for a more fast-paced game, especially when that's what he was used to. Um, I've actually played the Dynasty Warrior Gundam game, um, Gundam Muso. I've bought, I think, three different versions of it. Um, and so that game is a game where you are fighting against several, you know, 30, 40, 50 mobile suits in a given area at once, and you have to kill all of them in order to claim that area and progress. Those didn't have nearly the same level of detail as the models do in the Gundam Breaker games. What's more, when you have sort of tons of enemies to fight, it makes the triumph over any given enemy much less satisfying. You're expected to tear through these things as if they were tissue paper. You're expected to strike through, you know, the basic units in no more than two or three strikes. And your combos need to involve you stepping forward with every attack to put you within range of the next row of rank and file back so that you can keep killing at an efficient rate. It doesn't feel like an action game at that point, and in fact, Dynasty Warriors has always been sort of more focused on battlefield tactics and responding to what is happening on the battlefield rather than the individual battles. That's why the characters in the Dynasty Warrior games, based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel in China, have all been generals. All those characters are leaders, and you always have a cadre of uh, elite troops that follow you around and help you battle. So, in Gundam, it's not like that. Fights between mobile suits are supposed to invoke evoke uh, fighter plane battles. You know, you don't generally have. 30 aircraft flying around the same area at the same time they're going to crash into each other. Um, most forces being deployed are deployed in squad, or I don't know if it's a squad would be the right term, but a group of two aircraft, you know, your standard and your wingman, the, each wingman to each other, and they usually do two pairs of those uh, wingmen. Um, sometimes more depending on what's required, and sometimes they'll send a lone aircraft uh, without an escort, especially in the case of stealth uh, vehicles, um, to accomplish a mission. And that's what Gundam is sort of supposed to be like. You have a giant weapon of war with incredible destructive power. A single footstep is capable of killing multiple human beings. So imagine what happens when you give that sort of thing weaponry and then hand it to, more often than not, a young person who's going through some difficult times like all young people are uh, going to go through and told, kill as many enemies as possible. That's core to the Gundam experience. Now, the more lighthearted aspects of these games where they're not killing, they're just defeating enemies to earn points, 
that's fine, but they want to maintain that feel of a series of one-on-one -on -one battles, or maybe one guy versus a group of three or five. Even within the Gundam universe, a single mobile suit generally isn't capable of taking down more than five other mobile suits in any given engagement. It's only when you get to the really ridiculous mobile suits, like the Unicorn Gundam, the Gundam 00 Riser, um, the Freedom Gundam and the Strike Freedom Gundam, with their all-range attacks capable of attacking a dozen enemies at once. Uh, or, of course, any of the bit or funnel-equipped suits that can launch remote drones by the dozens, which can each individually shoot down a mobile suit so that they gain complete control of an area they're fighting in. Those are very rare, and they're supposed to feel like, in a video game, sort of a reward for progressing through the story and getting to the end of the, you know, story. <clears throat> But it becomes really easy to build those if you are given a whole host of parts. So there's so there, there needs to be a balance. You know, there needs to be sometimes you have to be able to kill multiple guys at once and and feel like that's something that you can do easily because there's a game. And sometimes you want to have you know very rough one on one battles that take a lot of effort. Um, and I don't think that Gundam Breaker Three necessarily had that feel. It had a couple bosses that were very difficult uh, because the bosses didn't play by the same rules as most of the mobile suits. But even when you were you know, fighting one-on-one -on -one with enemy mobile suits, you had your two partners. Uh, but more to the point, you also had your enemy summoning in grunt mobile suits in waves that were you know, sort of being defeated uh, incidentally as collateral damage while you were focusing on the boss and trying to reduce their health to zero. So, if they can maintain that sort of... If they can bring back what is core to the Gundam experience, uh, even if it slows the game down, I'm sort of okay with it. I'm less okay with the slowdown, and I really do hope that the PC version runs smoother. Um, I also hope that if it doesn't, if it, if the PC game has problems, it's possible that we'll be able to mod it, um, installing some files, changing some innies, uh, just to get the game to run sort of the way it should, um, that you wouldn't be able to do that on the PS4 or the Xbox One. <sighs> talking a lot about a game that I don't even know how it really is going to play. It comes out on Friday. Um, I actually need to uh, pre-order it on Steam so that I have access to it. I hope it's available on Steam. If it's not available on Steam, I will probably will just get it on the PS4. Uh, Steam makes getting games so much easier. But I'm going way over, so I'm just going to finish up by saying I'm Eric Sports, and tomorrow will be better.